Yeah, so this is a 500 hour interval service. Um, I'm close to 6,000 hours. So I got the machine in the shop and um, kind of go through the, the uh, stuff that's specific to the 1,000 hour or 500 hour uh, service. And, um, one thing I want to say is that um, I changed the hydraulic fluid at uh, 2,000 hours. So the tank was one of the first things I drained. I ran the machine in the shop and when it was warm, started with the hydraulic oil. Um, the, got the pump drives draining, the finals draining, and the engine while it was warm. But <clears throat> one of the things I want to say, as you can see on the screen, um, now I'm changing the return filters. and. Um, when I'm doing a 500 or a 1,000, uh, that is what I will do first. Um, it's kind of a trick. Probably most guys running 870s, the 870D know that, but if you don't, that's a good trick. Um, when the machine is cold and there's no pressure in the hydraulic system, uh, that's when you want to change these filters. It really makes it much cleaner. Um, you know, even under the best of circumstances, if that system is warm and pressurized, you're going to make a heck of a mess. I've tried it and it just doesn't work. So, you know, with obviously the hydraulic tank or the hydraulic system is drained. This is going to, this is cleaner, but uh, um, if you start with a cold machine, do this, the, the return filters first, you're definitely going to be a happier camper. So, yeah, so. These filters uh, are kind of, I feel like it's kind of a tough uh, process. I know on the, probably on the next edition, the return filters are going to be in tank and they'll be interested to see what those are like to change. But with that being said, I've been done it enough so that, you know, I've, I've kind of got it down and uh, works pretty well. I've got a couple, you know, tricks um, that I'd like to just pass on, maybe it'd help somebody out. But uh, um, as you saw in the earlier frames there, I start on the, the uh, what I call number one, which is the closest to the engine compartment, and then work back <coughs> through the all six, and then I'm working on the last one at the furthest back and just getting ready to uh, replace that one now. So um, I think cleanliness is the main thing, you know, so you'll see I, I uh, sprayed it off before I got started and, uh, pulled, you know, kept it clean and um, replaced the O-rings, oiled them up. I use that little uh, goldenrod pump oiler for changing filters. That's really handy to lube everything up. And uh, one thing about this system is these filters really have to be torqued on there hard. That's my experience. And um, that is, it's challenging and difficult, I think. And the filter wall itself, you know, the material is pretty thin. And so here, here's some tricks that I have or tips that have worked well uh, um, for me. Um, it, uh, uh, this tool I'm using right here, the filter wrench, it's a NAPA 900 series filter wrench. And uh, I'll have a part number for you. Um, it, and, but it works really well. It's quite wide. It's like four inches or so. And I can, uh, what I do, the thing I like about it is it's rugged. It's, it's a half inch drive. I use a half inch breaker bar. Uh, but I can unpin it. It's got a snap ring system on the on the retaining pin. So I can unpin it and slip it around the filter and then pin it together and either break the filters off the mount or tighten them up. And it works really well, especially for removing them because, you know, you need a wide filter wrench to not, you know, destroy the filter. Um, and that, you know, the thickness of the band makes it so you can't fit it on from the bottom. So this has worked well for me. I actually pack a spare one in my uh, toolbox um, just in case it, uh, it goes gunny bag on me. Um, and, you know, 
I've found that tilt that uh, when you tighten in the filters, it's really critical to keep the filter wrench snug against the lip at the top. That's critical, and because, uh, like I said, the, the material uh, is thin, and it's possible to crease it when you're tightening it. You know, because you got to tighten it down, or it'll leak. And I have ruined one filter, and as a result, I pack a spare hydraulic filter and a spare uh, water separator hydraulic filter with me, just in case. And I rotate them in so they don't get old. But just in case you do happen to crease one. Uh, so anyhow, um, yeah. But other than that, it's just simple uh, changing of filters. Not a hell of a lot to it, really. Take that square O-ring, or at least mine does. And uh, um, I find that putting the O-ring in the groove uh, dry and then oil in the bottom mating surface liberally after it's up in there is the best way. It kind of seems like it might be good to have oil on the top, but it's been my experience. If you do that, the damn thing will fall out on you. You know, it won't stay in the groove. So I put it in dry and then oil it. And I really oil everything, the threads on the filter uh, itself, the, the mating surface on the O-ring and the mating surface on the filter. And uh, that works well for when you got to uh, take them off. So yeah, pretty critical. Uh, component of the service, you know, the machine is, you couldn't get much more hydraulically based, and uh, I, uh, it always feels kind of pleasing to, to change the filters. You can see here, this is the last one going back on. This would be the first one I remove, and another trick I find helpful when I'm installing the filter wrench on it is to clean the filter itself, spray it off, as well as the wrench itself and that makes it you know clean so it's not sliding on oil and makes it easier to get the torque that you need. Yeah. You can see that's a, that's a I'm giving it pretty much all I can and use my left hand to hold it up against that uh, lip at the top. Yeah, so I got the return filters done now and uh, so like I said, tank is drained, so I'm going to go through the, uh, um, the charge filter as well as the pilot filters, you know, and get those changed. Um, you can see down there in one of the earlier frames it said, uh, it, you know, noted that uh, pump drive filter, the AYO66, and uh, um, That'll get changed too in a 500 or 1,000 hour interval, but um, I, I forgot to film it when I was changing it. The pump drive filter, or, or the fluid has been drained already. I got that going when it was, when I, after I ran it into the shop. Yeah, so I find that uh, you know, a few diapers make a pretty good, uh, um, you know, kind of catch basin for these filters here. This that's kind of a uh, oh, there you go. That, that pump drive filter is you know, it's that vertical one there in the, the frame. It'll change later. But uh, yeah, the diapers work well um, to catch it, especially on this charge filter. Another thing is these uh, these are bus tubs, this gray tub, and those are so slick for that uh, this you know for maintenance. I think especially for like the return filters, I've got a couple of them there on the floor of the engine bay, and uh, you know you can just put your full filters in there really easily that they're big enough so they there's room enough to catch the slop and whatnot. Works great, good tools.
Now these filters here, the, they're, I think they're the AY0983, and uh, they're all the same, the charge and the two pilot filters. And they're, fairly, they're a very heavy bodied filter. And uh, so you'll see I run them up by hand and then I'll put uh, a strap wrench on it and give it just a hair more. You know, you obviously you don't want to over tighten them, but you don't want them loose. They're running, it's fairly high system pressure on these. And uh, um, I found that to be a good technique. Um, the, the strap wrench, I, I, I love this. I, I uh, f found it finally. Um, I'd had, I think the one I had had for decades was a KD. And it's just a really simple wrench, um, just a strap and a, and a half inch square tube. I found one, I think, on eBay from Gear Wrench. And it, uh, so I got it. Um, the other one it was all worn out and twisted, and the strap was frayed. And, um, I like it. I was happy to find it. It's a good, another good tool, it seems like. Oh, that's good. Is your, uh, you still right down Gary pretty hard. I agree. Yeah, so this one here the, is the uh, two pilot filters at the very front of the pump compartment. And I've got one of them off, and here you go, strap wrench again, pulling the second one off. You gotta, you know, work your way in on these because they're quite close together. But uh, other than that, it's just a simple filter change, no O-rings, and uh, again, this is that heavy-bodied filter, so I'll, you'll see I'll, I tighten that up when I'm uh, reinstalling them. I've got a few of those diapers down underneath it here. They, you know, you, there's there's hoses that you can use to kind of cradle it up to catch the slop. And you can see when it, it when it loosens enough to, for the oil to run down, it makes it pretty hard to uh, turn it by hand. It gets so slick. Yeah, I was happy to get the machine back in the shop. I had a hose go down south on that Green Peter unit. It was a uh, the load sense line to the pump from the uh, the uh, clamp control manifold, and it was only a three eighths line. It happened first thing in the morning in the dark, and I could smell fluid. I stopped and looked, but I couldn't find a leak, and so I ran it a little bit more, and maybe it, it might have opened up. It was a rubbed failure and uh, uh, it just blew fluid everywhere. You know, the, the fan system blows it forward and it really made a mess. So once I get done with this service, I'll uh, do a thorough steam cleaning to keep it dusty. That's how I want my machine dry and dusty. So when I have a problem, I know where it is and can find it and fix it. Yeah, so I have to say, you know, once again, I, I'm really impressed by the Tiger Cat design. Um, in general, it's uh, it's very easy to service. It's just well thought out design with an you know an eye for detail. They uh, making it as easy as they could to uh, to service. There are only a couple little things that I. Uh, you know, I, I think that could be improved on, and most of them have been improved on. It's quite an impressive company in my estimation. I, I never tied her in. Because I figure if you're going to go off side, you'd be better off stuff. Yeah, you can see that goldenrod pump, the little pump oiler, that, that's really handy for filter changes. It's, it, you know, it's, it's uh, you can you can put the oil right where you need it and uh, keep it clean. It's right at hand. It's, it's a good tool for a big service like this. Yeah. So this is different. Like I said, I changed the flu hydraulic fluid at 2,000 hours. So the filters are changed. I'm going to uh, replace it. 
I love that little uh, hex cut out for the nut, the plug on the, uh, the fill spout. I think it took, uh, I put 85 gallons into it, I think, and then <coughs> it did take another five, um, and the filters absorb it or whatnot, but I filled it up just to fill. I didn't overfill it. And, uh, you can see right there, you can barely see it. That's the way we like it. The hydraulic fluid's so clean, you can't even see it hardly. Yeah, so I showed this, or we showed this on the, on the uh, one of the 250 interval services about changing the DEF filter, but I wanted to show it again. I just think it's really important. You know, I have no problems with DEF. Um, it, the systems work flawlessly for me, and uh, I don't I don't mind you know having the engine run clean. I think I see the uh, rationale behind it, and to tell you the truth, I think. These little things like changing this filter every 250 hours, keeping the tank full, um, keeping your def clean, that, those are the tricks to it. And if people are having problems, I think it's because they're not doing all of the above or one of the above. So I just wanted to show it again. It's a real simple filter, you know. That's, uh, I think it's inch and a 16th, 12 point. It's probably metric, but that's what I use and on a ratchet. and. Uh, pull that plunger and then I just grab with the Knipex there and that the filter body itself is kind of it's always kind of sticky in there but grab a hold of it and pull it down out and you're good to go. I use distilled water in a little spray bottle because you know that DAF is 99.9 percent .9 water and uh, that's what they recommend is distilled water to keep it clean. So that's what I'm doing to keep it clean up. Yeah, a little bit of that distilled water on it to keep it from, hopefully keep it from sticking, although it always seems like it's a little sticky in there. They give you a little plastic tool to pull that out, but that thing is absolutely worthless. It doesn't work. You can, you can grab the lip with a pair of pliers and coax it down out of there. Of course, the whole assembly is plastic, so it just needs to be snug. It doesn't need to be torqued. Yeah, so this is the last part of, you know, a 500 interval that, you know, is specific to that. If you're interested in what you're seeing here and you haven't seen that earlier video of the 250, you know, I'd encourage you to take a peek at it. But I just wanted to keep it kind of focused on what's specific to a 500 hour. And this is this is fairly difficult uh, filter to change. They've, you know, and again, Tiger Cat, they've, they've, uh, change the yep. filter design. I haven't seen it yet, but I think it's much easier to access and to change. But I poked the camera back in here, and, and uh, you got it's a pretty interesting view. Of course, I hadn't seen it before this. So, uh, but this right here, I think, is the key element of change this filter, and that is packing clean rags around that, I believe that would be a camshaft uh, gear there. Um, cause you've got these three 10 millimeter, uh, bolts that hold the filter itself on. And you know damn well that if one of them happened to come out, it would drop right down into your crank or your, you know, into the engine yourself. So that's the first thing I do is to, you know, plug those holes there with clean rags and then take the, uh, take the, the filter mounting bolts out the three. I think it's got a total of eight, uh, eight bolts that hold the, that cover on, and those are 13 millimeter there. 
I used just a standard 13 millimeter half inch drive socket on the hose, but I found that a, a deep half inch drive uh, 10 millimeter works well for taking the, uh, the actual filter mounting bolts off. And like you see, I broke them free and then just ran them out with just using the, uh, the socket itself. It seems like it works pretty well. Now I've done this enough now, so it, it, I've kind of got it, you know, down. It, it's not all that, you know, difficult. It is hard to get to. You're kind of standing up with your head in the deaf system and, and your arms reaching back in there. You really can't see. It's all by feel. But it does work. And I, I, apparently this is a critical filter in terms of engine life, the way with emissions and tolerances of the engine, you do not want to skimp on this uh, this particular filter. No, so anyhow, that's pr that pretty much does it there. It, uh, you know, it's. Um, hope you find it interesting. Any questions or anything, feel free to shoot me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, so uh, seven hundred dollars or so worth of filters later, we're. Uh, Getting close to having her done. Yeah, so one final point I just want to mention here is uh, you know, after filling the hydraulic tank and finishing the service, I let the machine sit overnight there in the shop. And that's so the air can settle out of the hydraulic fluid. And of course, filling the tank pressurizes it. But the next morning before I started up, I would be sure to check to make sure that the tank was still fully pressurized uh, so that the hydraulic system is charged. So that's a real critical point to, to uh, remember. So I uh, wanted to fit that in here at the end. So as always, we appreciate your interest and uh, thanks for watching.